Luke 13. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I can't. But unless, but unless you, you repent, repent, you will all likewise perish. You will all likewise perish. You will all likewise Praise God. Welcome to Battle Cry Sounding, Battle Cry Pounding. The Lord is on the move. And whenever the Lord moves, the devil moves. And whenever the Lord declares, the devil declares. So if we think that we're going to get through this life without opposition, without demonic warfare, without persecution, without hatred from the world, we're deceiving ourselves. If we want to continue in the way of the Lord, then we need to continue to adhere to the teachings. And that's the name of this message today, my teachings. Now Jesus, when he came upon this earth, did not come to declare himself in the sense that he had his own ministry. He came in as an extension of the Father's will, as the purpose of the Father's will, and as the propitiation for all of our sins that we could be redeemed that we could be forgiven by believing upon him and what it is that he has done for us that we could know his truth and his life and his power and his glory. Now God desires that we would understand that the teachings of Jesus are truth. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. But I, and the Father that sent me, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Where is thy Father? Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Who art thou? Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, do always those things that please Him. And if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. 
If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. A man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God, why can you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And hast thou seen Abraham? Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And if we will adhere unto the truth, then we are kept by God. But if we refuse the truth, if we reject the truth, then we are open prey for the devil. Now, God doesn't want us to be subject to demons. He doesn't want us to be overwhelmed by the devil. But he wants us to walk in the truth and in the light that he provides. Now, here we have in John chapter 12, and this is another in the series of Repentance Revolution teachings. We have here in John chapter 12, verse 42, beginning there and going on. And it says that... And it's talking about the scripture from Isaiah, how that God was going to um, seal them, so to speak. And it says, so that what Isaiah the prophet said was fulfilled. Lord, who has believed our report and our message, and to whom has the arm, the power of the Lord, been shown, unveiled and revealed. Therefore, they could not believe, they were unable to believe. For Isaiah has also said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened and ben benumbed their callous degenerated hearts he has made their minds dull to keep them from seeing with their eyes and understanding with their hearts and minds and repenting and turning to me to heal them so how do we get healed how do we get healed how do we get delivered how do we get forgiven by turning to the Lord hmm? you know there's a lot of people I meet them all the time they have been to every doctor. They have been to every clinic. They have been to every surgeon. They cannot be healed. They have spent endless hours, days, weeks, months, years under treatments. They cannot get healed. You know why? Because there's one way that we are healed, and that is by turning fully, completely, and totally to the Lord. Now, we can think that we are turning to the Lord. We can think that we are in obedience. But there could be an area of defiance in our lives that we don't even perceive until God opens our eyes. Because what does it say? It says they became dull. And so they were not receiving the healing of the Lord. It says that um, he has blinded their eyes and hardened and benumbed their callous, degenerated hearts. He has made their minds dull to keep their eyes, to keep them from seeing with their eyes and understanding with their hearts and minds and repenting and turning to me to heal them. Now, you notice it says there, which is the most important factor that we can grab hold of is repenting and turning to him. Repenting and turning to him. Now, we can repent people and turn right back to the city. You can see it all the time. Oh, I'm so sorry I did that. I'm so sorry this happened. Uh -oh. And then turn right back to the very sin that is killing you. Turn right back to the very thing that has made you a violator of God. Hmm? So, it is important that we realize here that God was angry at these defiant ones. And he put upon them a curse. But you know, if we truly repent unto God, we can come out from under any curse because God ordains it to be so. Because Jesus became the curse. And we do not need to live under ancestral curses. 
under curses of the sins that we have been guilty of. But we can fully repent unto God, turn fully unto God, embrace any truth that God wants to give us, and be set free. But in talking about all this, it says here in verse 41, Isaiah said this because he saw his glory and spoke of him. So it's saying it was the beholding through vision of the Lamb of God that Isaiah spoke forth these words. Okay? But then it says here in verse 42, and yet in spite of all this, many even of the leading men the authorities and the nobles believed and trusted in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess it for fear that if they should acknowledge him, they would be expelled from the synagogue. For they loved the approval and the praise and the glory that, came, that come from men instead of and more than the glory that comes from God. And they valued their credit with men more than their credit with God. Then it says, but Jesus loudly declared. So we see what was going on. The very same thing that we see in our time. That people are dull. That people are under the curse from God. That people are not repenting. That people are not allowing the Lord to heal them. That because they are not turning fully unto the Lord. But yet it says, in spite of all that, that there are those who believe, but they won't give up what? The approval and the acceptance of them. Why do you think that the whole church has perverted the truth? Why do you think that the whole church has defied God? Why do you think that the whole church has opened up the doors? Why? To the unrepentant sinners, to the perverts, to the sensual, to the defiant, to the rebellious. It has opened up wide and said, come in and be a part of us. Come in and we will accept you just like you. And we will seal you in your damnation because we are here. So why do we have that? We have it because men have wanted the approval of man rather than the approval of God. You want to be well spoken of? You want to be applauded? You want to be approved? You are wanting something that God does not ordain. Because Jesus promised us that we would be hated of all men for his name's sake. Jesus promised us that we would be persecuted. Jesus promised us that we would be hunted and hounded and treated as trash because we believe in him. If you want the approval of man, if you want the acceptance of man, you are not wanting the Son of God. But you are wanting the God of self. That you can be strong. That you can be worshipped. That you can be applauded. That you can be approved. Who is it that we love? Huh? Do we love the master? Do we love the one that laid his life down, that suffered all on all points, that we could be redeemed from the penalty of our sins? Not his sins, our sins. Or do we love ourselves? Do we love our own image? Do we love to be well spoken of? Do we love to have a good reputation? Do we love to have an outstanding response? If we love those things, we're not loving him. We're loving the image of the beast, which is spelled S-E-L-F. You and me in our degenerate carnal state are the very opposers of the power of God. In our now, is it true? Come on, is it true? We need to face this stuff for real. Because you see, the whole church has gone a-whoring. It's gone a-whoring after the God himself. Because why? Just like these jerks right here. Because the pastors, the evangelists, the leaders, the boards have wanted the approval of man. Have wanted the applause of man. The recognition of man. And not the acceptance of God. So, it's, what is it? We have the church of defiance. Not the rock of reliance. But the church of defiance. Defying the very gospel. Defying the very creator. Defying 
God the Father who sent to all humankind the teachings of Jesus. Okay, going on here it says, For they loved the approval and the praise and the glory that came from men instead of and more than the glory that comes from God. They valued their credit with men more than their credit with God. Now that's one for all of us to examine ourselves. Huh? And if we find self wanting to rise up and wanting to dictate to God how our lives should be and wanting to direct God in the orchestration of things and wanting to rule God so that we can have it our way slam self down put your foot on the neck of that beast and declare that you have dominion over self by the authority that's in Jesus Christ the Lord hey this thing's a warfare if you hadn't noticed hmm? we are locked in a battle we are locked in a battle with the forces of hell. We are locked in, the, in a battle with the forces of death. We are locked in a battle with the force of self. Then it says, but Jesus loudly declared. The one... So what is Jesus declaring? Is he declaring his ministry? Is he declaring his kingdom? No, he is declaring the kingdom of Almighty God. And he said, look, I'm the extension. I'm the one that he sent. I am the ambassador. If you believe in me and trust in me and rely on me, you are trusting in him. Hmm? But if you don't, you're not. So he's making it clear to them, hey, if these guys want to claim they believe me, want to claim they love me, want to claim they serve me, and they want the approval of man over identity with me, what does it say? Credit with men more than their credit with God. Then he's saying they don't even believe the God they profess. Because these were all supposed to be believers in God. Does today's modern church believe in Jesus? Mm -mm. Does it believe in God? Uh -uh. What does it believe in? Their own capability, their own performance, their own exhibition, their own show, and their own acceptance by men. That's their credit. But we are meant to aim for, strive, and desire credit with God. Did you know you can be <laughs> highly approved Highly acclaimed, highly accepted, and rejected by God. Huh? You know, I love God because He will test your faith. And He will show you, are you the real stuff or are you hot air? And He'll do it to you by the most fiery trial that can come upon you. And the very things that you have feared will smack dab face you right up. And then you've got to choose. Are you going to win or are you going to lose? Are you going to reach out to the arm of flesh that could rot in your hands? It's already rotten. Flesh is rotten. Are you going to be in fear of what men can do to you? Or are you going to fear your creator? Are you going to fear the one who gave you the privilege to be redeemed? This thing is real. You know, too much play church. People think they can lock away the realities of God and live in this fabrication and God accepts it. God does not accept it. Hey, if you want a sunshine God and you want everything going your way and you want it just the way you want it and you don't want to face these gut grippers, come on, coward. Let's get real. We've all got a coward in us. Huh? But you know what? We don't have to be cowards if we cry out to God. If we make our allegiance with God, if we say, God, no matter what happens to me, I'm with you. Because it's not my own life, it's your life. You're the one that bought me. You're the one that is meant to possess me. You're the one that I am meant to be the slave of. Let's quit loving our lives and start loving his life. Huh? 
Because every time we let fear grab hold of us, every time we let doubt and unbelief come into us, which God identifies as evil, what are we doing? We are trying to preserve self. And what will happen if we try to keep our lives? We'll lose the life in God. Hmm? Hey, if God wants you to lose it all, honey, let her go. Let her go. Because it's better to have nothing in the sense of what we think we need and to have God than to have the whole world and lose our souls. If I take a stand, I lose people. Better lose people than lose God. Better have nobody with you and have God for you than have the crowd with you and God against you. Said there's something worse than an empty church. It's an offended God. A fundamentalist is a person who has no other foundation but Jesus Christ. He's built upon the rock of ages that will stand forevermore. You know, there are some fellows would like to be called fundamentalists, but they have no right to the name. They're fundamentalists, pseudo-fundamentalists. They come into the fundamentalist nest, they would use the fundamentalist money, and they would destroy the fundamentalist stand. Yes, you need to cast them out. You need to finish with them once and for all. I hope you understand that. And a preacher that doesn't win souls, get rid of him. He's no use. That's right. If I was in, in a shop selling books and I never sold one, you wouldn't keep me. You'd say, get him out. He's no good. He can't sell. And a preacher that doesn't win souls, he's no use. You have to win souls for the Lord. And I want to tell you, God will give you souls for your hire. He'll give you souls for your hire. And the Lord said, don't rejoice because you've been successful. Rejoice because you're saved. Your name written in heaven. Here in the United States of America, where the church is trying to win an ear for the gospel with things that are polluted. And I want to say that to you today, young man. There's only one way to build a church. It's with that book. That's all I have got. I have no gimmicks. I have nothing. But let me tell you, I have a book. And that book will build a church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And you're not called, young man, let me say this to you. You are not called to be, first of all, an organizer, and secondly, to be a manager, and thirdly, to be a promoter. You're called to be a preacher. That's what you're called to be, a preacher. And you go and preach it. And you say, well, if I don't have, listen, you don't need anything. You get them fire in the pulpit and people will come out to see you burn. They'll say there's a fire up the road. Come on out. He doesn't need to say, if I get 150 out to the morning service, you can put shaving soap all over me. I'll swallow a goldfish if we reach the 500 mark. Doesn't need that. That's polluting. That's polluting the gospel. Away with it. It's not part of the fundamentalist witness. I want to tell you, when you go in for that, the next thing you'll be in ecumenical evangelism. And I find these churches that go in for that, then they go to ecumenical evangelism. And then they don't take any stand on the issue. Oh, there's nothing stands up to testing like holiness of heart. A dedication to the law. A desire to be like Christ. It was Jonathan Edwards of New England who preached the great sermon, Sinners of the Hands of an angry God that cried out in prayer, Oh, to be as holy as it's possible. That should be the prayer of our hearts. The holy faith we have doesn't need the gimmicks of the devil or the worldly methods. It just needs a pure faith. Give me a holy man with faith in his soul and a Bible in his hand and he'll shake the community God puts him in. A man called Enoch, he didn't belong to the World Council of Churches. He was an old-fashioned preacher of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before the Lord came the first time, he was preaching the second coming. And he walked with God in a dirty, filthy, degenerate, apostate age. And he cried out what a sermon he preached against the hard speeches of ungodly sinners. You'll become a martyr if you stand for God. Yes. And if they can't kill you, they'll kill your reputation. So don't worry about it. You'll survive. I have had everything said about me that could be said about any man.
everything and have thousands of enemies but of God before you who can be against you I say Lord if ever this mind of mine suggests that I should compromise put a shroud on me put me into the coffin and get me out of this world I want to finish with my guns blazing against the devil in his crowd I want the last sermon that I preach to be ten times hotter against the devil's crowd than the first one I want to go out fighting the battle that I carry my scars with me as a testimony to my Lord that I loved him. You got any scars? I'm glad I have a few scars in my ministry. They're tokens that I have loved Jesus with all my heart. Oh, I want to tell you, friend, you'll be called many a thing, but you've got to take a strong, bold stand and be certain about it. And when somebody comes to town with a big name, don't be afraid of him. He doesn't stand for God. Go after him. You've got a weapon that can cut chunks out of him. And that's the word of God. And when you're finished with him, many years ago when I was a young preacher, Leslie D. Weatherhead, the president of the Methodist Conference in England, came to our city. Leslie Weatherhead was an arch apostate. He's now in hell. He's gone to his own place. He was the man that said that Jesus Christ was the bastard child of Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, and Mary, who was a prostitute of the temple. That's what he says in his book, The Christian Agnostic. That's about as vile a thing as anybody could say. So I said that as he had come to the city, I wanted to confer a new degree on him. And I publicly conferred on him the title G-O-V. And boy, the press came after me. They said, what does that mean? Generation of vipers. That's what it means. He wrote afterwards to the press. And he said, that fellow Paisley is too quick with a sword. Hallelujah. Best testimony I ever had. What you've heard in secret, shout from the house. Better to have nothing in the sense of what we think we need and to have God than to have the whole world and lose our souls. Now you see a lot of Christian, Christian with a big question mark, a lot of Xen. That's how they used to write Christmas is X Mass. Well, Xens. That means people that are claiming Christ but have nothing to do with him. But a lot of Christians have gone for the fabulous life. Everything you want in this life. Your best life now. And they have lost out completely with God. Because they are defying his teachings. They are defying his teachings. Hey, if our lives will not match up with this word and with the spoken word of the Lord, then we can be sure of one thing. We are in defiance. We are flat out in defiance of God. And we want to whine and we want to complain and we want to moan. We bring it to ourselves. Wherever we defy God, we get cursed. Hmm? Wherever we defy his teachings, we get cursed. Do you have curses in your life? Get down deep. Go on, let the Spirit of God dig you deep and let that spirit of defiance be manifest and let, you, let your eyes be open to behold every place that you need repentance, deep repentance, repentance revolution because you defied God and you thought you got by. Honey, we don't get by on God. We do not get by on God. None of us does. We always pay. We play, we pay. We play, we pay. The longer you want to play, the more you're going to pay. This thing is sobering, and this thing is truth, and this thing is life and death. I think, well, you know, God knows we're but children. Did you know children are accountable? Huh? Children are accountable. Say, well, I don't believe even children can get saved. Well, I don't care what you believe. We're all accountable to God. Then it says, and whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. So what's he saying? He's saying, I am. And if you see me, you've seen him. But you know, you can look right at Jesus and not see him. Because you've been blinded. Because you've been dulled. Because you prefer to live in your imagination than in the presence of God. Did you know when you get in the presence of God, you're going to see your uglies? And you're going to see your sins, and you're going to see your shortcomings, and you're going to see the defiance that you have lived in towards God. 
Now Jesus' teachings were not his own. They were his father's. Because he was merely the extension of the father. And these were people who claimed wholeheartedly that they believed in God the Father. But you know what? They refused the Son. So did they believe in God the Father? No! They believed in their imagination. They believed in their conjecture. They believed in their crafty invention and their supposition as to what the Messiah should be. They wanted it their way, not God's way. And do you know we can be guilty of the same thing? We want this Christian life to go our way. We want God to come under our dictates. We want to rule and reign because we don't want trouble. We don't want hardship. We don't want suffering. We don't want anguish. We don't want battle with demons. We want the good life that'll take us straight to hell. So who's the fool? Who's the fool? You are, I am, when we defy God. When we want it our way. <laughs> Honey, if we don't want it God's way and we won't live it God's way, we're liars. And where do liars end up? Hell. Then it says, I have come to live in darkness. So what's that saying? It's saying that if it is me that you accept as the light, you will no longer be in darkness. But see, that acceptance of him as the light believes in me, cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, may not continue to live in darkness. Relies on me. Relies on me. You know, my husband and I went to bed last night and the Lord was admonishing us about trusting and trusting and trusting in him. Now what is he saying? Whoever trusts in and relies on me. Now when you find that shaky quaky inside of you when you're in a trial and you want to reach out to this arm of flesh and you want to reach out to that arm of flesh and you want to call in this expert and you want to go seek your counsel of Egypt and run to Sodom and get your advice. Are you relying on God? Am I relying on God? Or are we deceiving ourselves? Or we just play yeah. You know what? God gave me a song years ago about how real he is and how much if we want to be real, we have to be in the places he takes us and go through the dealings. Because there's only one way that you get made real in this show. And that's let Jesus be the director. Hmm? That's let Jesus be the preeminent the dominator and not defy him or rebel against him but be repentant unto him and be subjected unto him submission 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 reliance 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 trust 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 now you want to scream demons have at it those words are dirty nasty words these days you talk about being submitted to god and people go bonkers well, I know God. Well, I can talk to God. I don't need that submission. When you say that, that proves you do. Because if you're submitted, you don't need to declare that you don't need it. Then it says, if anyone hears my teachings and fails to observe them, does not keep them, but disregards them. It is not I who judges him, for I have not come to judge and to condemn and to pass sentence and to inflict penalty on the world, but to save the world. So what is he saying? If you hear the teachings of Jesus, if you hear the teachings of Jesus, and you reject them, you are judged. What are you judged by? He's saying, I'm not judging you. What are you judged by? You are judged by that rejection, that defiance that you choose above his teaching. You say, oh, I don't have to do that. Oh, that doesn't apply to me. Oh, that's passed away. Oh, I don't believe all that. You are judging yourself and you are condemning yourself. Hmm? When Jesus says he didn't come to condemn, it's true. We condemn ourselves by our choices. 
whoever we choose to obey, whatever we become a servant or slave unto, that is what is either our acceptance or our condemnation. If anyone hears my teachings and fails to observe them, does not keep them, but disregards them, it is not I who judges him. For I have not come to judge and to condemn and to pass sentence and to inflict penalty on the world, but to save the world. Anyone who rejects me and persistently sets me at naught, refusing to accept my teachings, has his judge, however. For the very message that I have spoken will itself judge and convict him at the last day. So if you, in your life, have heard the teachings of Jesus, and you have defied those teachings, and you have rejected those teachings, and you have failed to come under those teachings, those teachings stand, and you fall. Come on. The Word of God stands forever. Did you hear me? The Word of God stands forever. If God has judged by one of his servants your sin, and he has decreed that you are forsaken, that you are damned, that you are rebellious, that you are defiant, that word will stand. When you stand before God, that will be your condemnation. We think we escape the teachings of the Lord. We think we can run to the world and become a success. We think we can run to the world and suck sight. We think we can run to the world and become rich and increased with goods and get away from that God stuff. We never, ever escape the teachings of Jesus. They will always be there. And they will judge us in that moment. There's no use taking a step back, a step back from me. For the very message that I have spoken, will itself judge and convict him at the last day. This is because I have never spoken on my own authority or of my own accord or as a self or as self-appointed, but the Father who sent me has himself given me my orders concerning what to say and what to tell. Then he says, and I know that his commandment is is means eternal life. So whatever I speak I am saying exactly what the Father has told me to say and in accordance with His instructions. So what is He basically saying to them? He's saying my teachings are the very will, the very word, the very ordination of God the Father. And whatever I give you, whatever I declare unto you, whatever I exhibit to you by visual demonstration of my power, it is the Father who is doing these things that you either believe and receive or you either defy and damn yourself. And we love to get into the jot and tittles and try to twist Jesus' teachings and accommodate sin and cover over perversion and act as though it's all encompassing and all loving. Hey, he said, you reject my teachings, you are rejected of God. You are literally forsaken of God because you have forsaken the way of life. Hmm? You want to play around with God? You want to see who's the boss? You want to defy God? You're the one that pays. You're the one that will face it in the end. You're the one that will not be able to run away from the teachings. Because why? My teaching, my word, is not mine, it's His. And what is He saying that for? to let them know that the very God they profess they believe in is teaching them and they are rejecting it, they are defying it, they are withstanding it, and they are rebelling against it, and he is letting them know by the very actions, by the very deeds you are choosing, above obedience, you are choosing your own damnation. If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them,
look up at the blue sky And I know that it's just a temporary die Sometimes we tiptoe Sometimes we run Sometimes we wonder while looking at the sun Sometimes we tiptoe Sometimes we run Sometimes we wonder why Looking at the sun Sitting on the cold dirt floor I want to finish the counting of days on the walls I build a ladder from broken wishbones and screws Sometimes we run, sometimes we wonder why looking at the sun. Sometimes I'm not going to accept glory from men, but I tell you that you have no love for God within you. I have come in my Father's name, yet you don't accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe? While accepting glory from one another, you don't seek the glory that comes from the only God. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your home. Even though I remain to avoid them, they change location every day. Traces they vanish, but shall one stay put? Shall one stay low? Shall one not go just to avoid this home? For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. But if you don't believe his writings, how will you believe my word? I speak unto thee this day, and I say, be thankful each and every day that it is me you are privileged to serve. I say, be thankful each and every day that I give thee the light upon the path, if you will be receiving the same. But I say, you are living in a time when multitudes and multitudes are wandering in desolated places, and I say it is simply because they have walked in defiance of me. That is, they have resisted, resented my authority in their lives, and they've set out to defy the same. Now I say this day that I, the living God, never called men to defiance, but I say that I called them to reliance upon me. That is, I called men to desire my way, to walk in the same, to be uplifted in the truth, the light, the mercy of who I am. But I say with men through their defiance of me, through pride and arrogance and vain conceit, will think they find a better way. I say they find the prison house of their own shape. And I say they are kept locked in the same because they have chosen defiance of me. Now I say this day that I, the living God, brought men forth in my image, my likeness, that they would be serving me. That is, that they would choose the way of life, the way of truth, and the way of mercy unto me. But I say when men have chosen a way that I never intended, nor did I provide, what have they done? I say they've chosen the road, the way to their own damnation and despair. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do call men to repentance, revolution, in this wicked, perverse, and vile generation. And I say, while men are headed to hell, it is me, the living God, who reaches out my hand of mercy and compassion unto them. And I say that if men will receive my hand and come up in the same, I say that they will be uplifted by me. But I say if men will defy my call to repentance, then I say they are the ones who are damned in the same. 
For I say, when I live in God, you purpose, and I ordain a time and a season, and men will pay heed to the same, then they are brought in to right standing with me. But I say, when men will defy my call, will defy what it is that I desire of them, then I say, they are literally sealing themselves. Now I say, in this time that I don't have been God, you desire that men would know of repentance, revolution, and get themselves over unto the same. But I say that if men will choose to defy what it is that I have for them, then I say they are locked into the defiance, and there they remain. Now I say this day that I don't have been God, have called men to come in to me, to walk uprightly in me, to be ever directed by me. For I say, if it is me that you look to, if it is me that you will believe, trust, and obey, you are ever guided by me. But I say, if you are the one who sets the limits on me, what it is that I can do for thee, and therefore you are justified to defy me, no, you are a fool. For I say, when you choose to oppose me, you are choosing the very way of my life. Now I say this day that I don't have been God, do not, I absolutely do not intend for men to live in the state that they are in. But I say they are there because of the defiance that is covering in this world at this time. That is, because men chose to defy me rather than obey me. Now I say that all are paying for the same. That is, that even this land that ye are in is ruled by defiance. Now I say this day that I the living God do not call my own people to be defiant, but I say that I call them to be seeking to be in obedience unto me. For I say it is obedience you are meant to cling to. It is obedience that you are meant to live in day by day. Now I say if you truly are in repentance, revolution, you will not despise obedience, but I say you will cherish the same. For I say you will know, understand, and realize that it is the way of my life. Now I say this day when you feel that thing within me, within your own bosom, within your own mind that would try to rise up in defiance of me, I say reckon that thing to be dead. That is, pay no heed unto it. Do not bow unto its whims, its rants, its raves, but I say resist it fastly and not obey the same. That is, do not give yourself to obedience unto defiance of me, but I say instead be obedient to my commands. For I say it is me, the living God, you are meant to serve, to follow after, and obey. Now I say you are locked in a warfare, but I say do not falter in the same. But I say instead be continuing to look to me, to believe in me, to trust in me. And I say be continuing to seek to please me, to walk uprightly in me, and be brought forth in my life. For I say it is me, the living God, who is the way of all righteousness and truth, blessedness, strength, and the mercy provided. Now I say this day that I, the living God, have called thee to be thankful that you can indeed be ever guided by me. That is, I call thee to be thankful that you can indeed walk uprightly in the truth, the light, the strength that I give for thee. But I say, if you choose to defy my commands, if you choose to rely on your own understanding, then of course you pay for the same. And I say that you go in the way of the wayward, the foolish, the vile, who will perish in their own corruption. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do give forth the words of life, the words of truth, and I say that men are men to believe in the same. That is, they are men to trust me, believe me, and obey me, and come forth in my way. But I say, when men are steadfastly resisting what it is that I offer, what it is that I give unto them, what do they do? I say, they go in a way that will give them weariness and dreariness day after day. Now I say, this day that I the living God do not call me to be under the lordship, the rulership of demons, and be overwhelmed by them. But I say that I call thee to rise up in the spiritual authority of who I am and declare the same. For I say it is me, the living God, who has intended that men would be in obedience unto me, and therefore able to walk in my way. But I say when men will grow lazy and defiant of me, then I say they have no authority at all. Now I say you are living in a time when the so-called church has no authority, and I say they simply open the door to demons and let them in. Then I say they make a pact with them against me, and they openly defy me in the same. And all the while they claim that it is me that they love, that it is me that they serve, but I say that is nothing but lies. For I say they are serving 
the deceit, the conjecture of demons and their own evil minds. Now I say this day, if any man will claim that he loves me, claim that he'll follow me, claim that he'll obey me, what must he do? I say that he must stop his defiance and he must indeed bring himself into obedience unto me. For I say it is a matter of the will what it is that you choose to obey. And I say if you choose to obey demons, then you are ruled by the same. But I say, if you choose to obey me, then I say, it is me, the living God, who bears rule over thee. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call thee to be blinded by false compassion in this time. For I say, so many who set out to follow me have given way to false compassion, and I say, in so doing, they align themselves with the devil. I say, you are not meant to be aligned with the devil through false compassion, because I, the living God, do not call thee to do so. But I say that I call thee to walk soberly in the truth, redeeming the time, being made glad, ever thankful unto me. Now I say this day that I, the living God, have called thee to walk in the truth, to be guided in the truth, to be ever instructed by me. And I say that I call thee to be thankful that it is me that you can continue to look to, to believe and obey. For I say, if it is me that you bow before, if it is me that you seek to please, it is me who ever guides thee forth. But I say, when any will defy me, then I say, they need, deeply need repentance immediately, or they will be consumed. For I say that you are living in a time when defiance has grown so strong, so angry, and so powerful, because men refuse to resist the same. Now I say, they have no resistance to defiance. And I say that I, the living God, do not call thee to be swallowed in defiance, but I say that I call thee to be triumphant in the truth. That is, by willing your will to obedience and to me and all that I ask of thee. Not playing around with the defying of my orders, but rather realizing there is only life in the same. That is, when you will indeed be obedient unto me, you shall live. But I say, if you move over into defiance of me, then it's possible, very possible, that you could die. For I say, it is a time that I, the living God, will vindicate my wrath upon the defiant, the rebellious, the hateful, who want their own way. But I say there are those who are caught in the throes of defiance, and I say they are literally moaning to be delivered of the same. Therefore I say take it up as your goal to repent for their sin, to repent for their darkness, to repent for their foolery, that indeed they can be free to the degree that they will repent unto me. For I say it is me, the living God, who has called thee to intercede at this time, for those who are bound in defiance, yet cry out and moan to be delivered of the same. For I say, because of the spirits of the age, because of the defiance of even those who claim that they are my people, I say that defiance is a powerful force. But I say it is not nearly as powerful as the force of obedience that I, the living God, do give as a pathway of life unto my own. Therefore, I say, continue in repentance, revolution, day by day, praying as I, the living God, would dictate unto thee. And I say, continue to know that in me is found the strength and the truth, the light that I provide. Now I say, you are living in a time when the land is covered with teachings and more teachings and more teachings, but I say they are not my teachings. I say they are the teachings of imagination, conjecture, and invention. And some are literally nothing more than the teachings of demons. And I say that men have grown fat and rich and dull and dumb and stupid in the same. And I say they have gorged themselves to the hilt and they think they have it all. But I say they are blinded fools who are giving poor teachings that will damn their souls, that will damn the souls of, of others and seal them forever in hell. And I say, while they think they've gained something because they are living sumptuously in this life, I say they are utter fools. For I say they have given themselves to teachings that are teachings of damnation and destruction. I say this day that I, the living God, do not call thee to multiply teachings, but I say that I call thee to my teachings, for they are the truth. And I say it is me, the living God, who will cause to be separated the precious and the vile. And it is me, the living God, who will receive and to my bosom the ones who delight to be delivered of those demons. But I say that the ones who desire to remain defiant will do so to their own damnation. Now I say this day that it is me, the living God, who is bringing it to the point of repentance of today. That is, if men will truly repent, will change their ways and seek to walk uprightly, then I, the living God, will have mercy on them. 
But I say, if men will continue in a way that is rebellious, defiant, and opposing me, they are the ones who are damning their own souls. For I say, whatsoever it is that a man will will his will to obey, the same bears rule over him. Now I say this day that I the living God do not call thee to the uselessness, the futility of your own way. But I say that I call thee to my way, which is the truth and the light. And I say, if you will be coming forth in that way, then you are ever uplifted in me. And I say, if you will be believing in me, I say, you are given the light upon the path. I say, this day, be thankful for repentance, be thankful that I, the living God, am offering mercy at this time, that you can indeed cry out unto me and be receiving of the mercy, the truth, the light that I provide, that you can indeed be ever strengthened, directed, and guided forth, for it is me, the living God, who gives the life unto thee. For I say that I am indeed the one who desires to see thee brought forth, ever uplifted, directed, and ever guided in me. For I say it is a privilege to be repentant, it is a privilege to be in revolution against sin, against darkness, against demon forces on every hand. And I say it is a privilege to bring yourself into obedience unto me, that you do not defy me at all. And I say it is a privilege through repentance, revolution, to defy the powers of darkness and literally revolt against them. That you can indeed be subdued, subjected, and submitted unto me as thy God. Now I say this day be thankful that it is me that you serve, that you are not in captivity to demons, that you are not in slavery to the same, but you can come forth in the truth, the light, and the mercy that I provide. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by.